make sure the people hear me and see me. Microphone check. One, two, one. Homeowners are. No, nope, we don't want that. Uh, move out of the way, move out of the way. Two, one. Let's see how we sound. Uh, ah, yeah, see, we sound great. Hey, guys, what's going on? Are you guys ready for a good show? If you are ready for a good show, what I want y'all to do is tell me this one phrase. Say, damn right. We pipes, I like beer, dark and light, Copenhagen pouch tight, damn right. I don't give a fuck if I'm like, yeah, I vote for Trump twice and I would do it third time, damn right. Pittsburgh is where I reside, never run it from the fight, doesn't matter right. what you decide, damn right. Yeah, the crowd don't hate on the crowd, you don't like the way it goes, damn right. These birds are getting so tight, my mind's gone, it feels like I'm working day and night. This is the interview that I am, I'm honored to have you here, number one. I'm honored because when I was listening to you, I heard probably one of the most logical, I can't even say logical women, one of the most logical people I'd ever heard. And I don't know if you saw my video where I was punching air and, <laughs> and cheering because one of the things that struck me was you were unafraid to speak what was on your mind. I want to find out from you, where did you get that from? That ability to just say, I don't care what people think. I'm going to say what I think is right. Um, if anyone has read my book, my life story, life of a real housewife, and I should have brought you a copy today, but when I was five years old, I was sexually abused by a family member mm -hmm. and it wasn't just me. It was also my other cousins who were around my age, but everyone was afraid to tell. I wasn't. So I was the voice. Um, I went, I told it was swept up under the rug. Of course, that destroyed my self-esteem, made me feel as though I wasn't important, but it also began to build this fighter. So it was like, you know, once my voice was taken away from me at such a young age and I couldn't defend myself, I knew that whenever I got in a position where I could use my voice and fight with my voice, that I would do so and I'd never let anybody stop me. I, I talk about that a lot. I said a lot of black girls are... Um basically held captive in their own homes. I had a cousin who was raped and molested. And then when I started, when I got, when I got to be an adult, I saw a lot of the girls that I dated said that they were either raped or molested, but we don't talk about that. It's like this weird hidden secret. They, they will protect the children almost are forced to protect the adult from the thing that the adult did wrong. Can you tell us why we as black people, we see what's happening to our young black girls and it's affecting them when they become adults. But this is something we don't talk about. Why? Um, I think shame um, may be a thing and then having to understand the bond of kinship, right? Because that was something that I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand why, because this is a family member 
that nobody did anything. I didn't have the understanding that these were, you know, my mother's child and her sister's child. And then you got my grandmother and then that's still my mother's nephew. And, you know, all type of family dynamics and politics play into those situations when it's involving family. But I think for me, where I'm at, it's important for us to protect children Thank you. and not protect the predators. Okay. And speaking of, we got to go to it. I saw that interview with you and the, the leftist club. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the leftist club, and they brought you on there, and they were talking about something that has bothered me ever since it, it, its inception, I guess, this idea of the transsexual community. And you and I, you said some of the same things that I say. You said, look, we're not trying to stop them from doing what they're doing. But the problem is they're trying to make everybody not only accept it, but congratulate them for it. Uh, there was an NBA player. He came out gay and everybody congratulated him. But they forgot the fact that he had been engaged to this woman for eight years while he was doing it. And if I did that, they called me a cheater. But he was called a hero for some odd reason. I did a story yesterday about a young boy, 18 years old, still in high school. His name is Orlando Perez. Orlando Perez is in jail right now for um, he murdered a tranny. I saw you that. You saw that. Mm -hmm. it, to me, if I had sex with an 18-year-old right now, even if you're going to jail, I'd go to jail there mm -hmm. in high school. You have a situation here where this individual was, I call it rape. Mm -hmm. Because if I have sex with you and my home, I walk out of the room and say, I'll be right back. And I let my homeboy come in and do it. He just raped you and I raped you. We'd go to jail for that. If I tell you I have a condom on and I slip it off, I just raped you. Why is it that this isn't called rape? And what, what is it that you would like to bring onto the floor of Congress if you were to get uh, if you were to get there on the fifth district? I think that's a double standard and we know exactly what that is. I believe that if you have to deceive someone into having sex with you and if you force a man to give up his manhood mm. unknowingly, I also believe that that's rape and I believe that there should be some stiff penalties behind that. How we'll be able to prove whether or not that person knew mm. is another story. But here we have that story. There's an 18 year old kid. The transgender was 38. What are you doing sleeping with the kid? And then maybe this this boy was just excited and didn't know some people can't deal with the deception Thank you. and so I think that it's important for us to raise awareness about that because you know we're seeing all of this black trans lives matter and I think that all lives matter including black lives but we need to make sure that we're making smart decisions just like in the Rayshard Brooks situation and not putting it ourselves in a situation that leads to our death Ooh. what I would like to do on the Congress floor is pass laws that protect the innocence of children um as far as i'm concerned like i said on the breakfast club before whatever adults do that's their business but we should not be tying children to anything sexual children should not be walking talking advertisements for sexual preferences um sexual whatever you want to call it it's all involving sex Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a dangerous climate that we are creating. I think that we're trying to, well, they are trying to create an atmosphere where children are okay with sexuality and, and freely expressing sexual preference. And we look and we see it on Nickelodeon. We see it on Cartoon Network. And I don't know about you, but if I was to see a 12 year old girl right now that was pregnant, we would all have a lot of questions. It should. We be would want to know what's going on. Who got her pregnant? Why is she pregnant? Even if we see an 11 or 12 year old girl that's very promiscuous, we would also like to know what's going on. So why is it okay now for our boys? Mm -hmm. We need to protect the innocence of children until they're ready to make mature decisions. And if you notice, it seems like they are going directly after boys. They're mm -hmm. lauding these little boys. Uh, the Amazing Desmond is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a whole bunch of them out there. And they had this one, the Amazing Desmond, I think is his, his name. I can't remember which one it was, but he was eight years, a uh, ten years old, dancing on a stage. I don't know if and you throwing saw throwing money and at him. Throwing money at him. Mm -hmm. It seems like the battleground. What we need to worry about right now is not cops, but kids. Children. No one seems to take our children. And I'm just seriously. gonna and I'm just gonna go there, okay? Because when we talk about LGBTQ 
R P I A plus. Now all of this is documented. So for me personally, I had to go do my research because I needed to know what the P meant, what the A meant, what the I meant, all of that. Mm -hmm. And up under the definition of P, pansexual, it's a person that prefers to have sex with anyone. You know, there's no there's no bias, right? There's no so, boundary. There's no boundaries whatsoever. So children could definitely fall up under that. So we have to be very careful. And this is for the LGBTQ community as well to wake up and understand what's happening behind the lines. Because what they, anytime we see something crazy, it always sneaks in on us, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's important for us to wake up and realize what it is that they are doing to our young children. And I think that it's also important for me to bring up the Obamacare kid. Please. Are you familiar with the Obamacare uh, yeah, kid? It, please educate us on that one. That's can, something I haven't heard Is there any of. way that you can type in on Google the Obamacare kid and pull up the images? I'd like to show something to the up. audience Let's right quick. Just go to the images. Okay, go to the images. Okay, so which one you want us to see? So this one right here, the first one with him and Joe Biden. Okay. See, see with the little boy on the side of the desk. All right, let's see. If right we can get there that in on the middle. The, the one in the middle, you say. Over there, you see where Obama is signing the paperwork. Okay, I see it. This fella here. All right, he's on the screen. Okay. So that fella there, that was a 10 year old little boy that they used to pass Obamacare. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they used him as the face. He was called the Obamacare kid. Now, as we know, Obamacare um, allotted tax dollars to pay for sex reassignment surgery. Mm -hmm. Now, look at that picture right there of Obama with those two women. Okay. Good. Right here, right? That one. So who is this? This is the Obamacare kid and his mother. He just came out as no. a full grown woman. You lying? Two years ago. No, I'm not lying. No, I'm not lying. That so, little boy is that little girl? I mean, that, that grown woman? Yes. Yes. So, so Jeez. to me, to me, and again, when you're grown and you want to make those type of decisions, that's one thing. But why are we encouraging our young men to become women? And I'm talking about underage children. I'm talking about minors. Not only that, why is tax dollars funding that? So I think for me, when I was a kid, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted. I went through so many different phases. You know, mm -hmm. one minute I wanted to write, one minute I wanted to paint, one minute I wanted to play basketball, one minute I wanted to be an actor. One, You know, I went through so many different phases as a child, and we always change our mind, yes. right? Like one minute, we're, we, we don't even know what we want to eat when we're kids, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know anything. So why are we passing laws, passing legislation, allotting tax dollars, to sterilize our children and allowing them to change their sex before they're even old enough to make a rational decision. Now this is, Obama was a Democrat president. That's him and Joe Biden. Look how Joe Biden is caressing his shoulders. Do I need to go there? Uh, no, y'all don't, don't want Do to Do I need this. to go there? Please, please go there. I'm just asking a question because to me, I personally, not that one, that one at the top. Oh, that's Joe. Oh, because I see him right here yeah. caressing his shoulder. That's him bent down. So that's front. just the front side that's, of it. And that's Joe Biden as well. Wow. So as you guys can see from this picture, that's Joe Biden on the back. You see, he's got his hand on his shoulder. Now we're going to show y'all the front version of that exact same picture where Joe Biden, for some odd reason, which is what he does as he was doing with the, the little young girl as she was shooing him away and no one else helped that girl. Look. Listen. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But for me, as a woman, and I don't mm -hmm. even necessarily have to say a black woman, but as a woman, a woman I've always looked to men for leadership. I know we have this new wave of feminism now, right? This toxic feminism that aborts our children and destroys our men, mm -hmm. right? But I never wanted to be a part of that. I'm a part of the feminism that loves our men and cherishes our children. So we should look to our men for them to lead us. Obama should have been our savior. 
why would Obama pass legislation and allot tax dollars to turn our young men into women? Why would the Democrats allow this? Why would they still be pushing this? Why did Joe Biden just say the first thing that he is going to do when he gets in office is pass LGBTQ equality? Right? What else do they need? Why are I've asked about this and maybe you can uh, enlighten us. Why is it that the LGBT has attached itself to all civil rights, black causes and Coulter came out and said that the, L, the, the LGBT and other groups are hijacking civil rights because civil rights was made specifically for blacks. Everybody Obama. else have hijacked it and now leapfrogged us as you Obama. stated. We're still marching for stuff that we were marching for. In Obama. The 60s. Obama was or should have been outside of Jan, John Hansen, our first black president. Right. Mm -hmm. So black people were looking to Obama to be the savior for black people. But Obama didn't go in the White House and paint the White House black. He went in the White House and turned the White House into a rainbow. Pull it up on the screen and show it to him. Oh, uh, yeah, oh yes, he did. Let me Pull see. it up on the screen. Obama White House. That's all you got to type. No, we, we probably have to put uh, LGBT or rainbow. 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 There it goes. <laughs> and up. just to, and, and I want you guys to take a look at this yeah. and realize how ridiculous that this this photo is. Every time I see it, I'm 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 offended. I don't know how when you go across it, it turns back black and white. I've never seen that on any picture. When you go across it, it turns back black and white. Let me see. So this is what happened to the civil rights. Okay, this is where we lost that. Mm -hmm. And this is why we see so much unrest right now. But why do we keep attaching our, letting everybody else attach themselves to what it is that's supposed to be ours and now we've been left behind? That's the question that I have. And that's why I'm here to wake our people up and let them know that there is a separation. Even with my own son, I let him know, baby, you were black <laughs> before you ever had a sexual preference. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I like to explain to people all the time, you know, your sexual preference has nothing to do with my skin color. If we were going to a country that imposed death upon um, homosexuals, let's just say for say, and we were walking through that country and I was with a gay male, he could actually disguise himself to look like a straight male and no one would know that he is gay. But if we were in that same country and they killed people and hung them just because they were black, there is no way that I could be able to disguise my skin color. There is a difference between your sexual preference and my skin. But today, we have a lot of black males, pretty much, too, who would rather identify as, because they've gotten so much and so much power, they'd rather identify as gay before they identify as black. And that's another thing that I don't understand. Like, why is it when I introduce you, why do I have to be introduced to your sexual preference? I, I'm not interested in your sexual preference. I just want to know you as a person. So why are we being identified by who or what we like to sleep with. Yep. We never say heterosexual so-and-so, the heterosexual candidate, so-and-so when they come up on the stage. Right. Uh, and we never laud them. We don't have any heterosexual pride. Why is it that heterosexuals can't have pride if we have gay pride? I don't understand that. Why is it that I can say, <coughs> if I came out right now and said, I want my daughter to be gay, I would be applauded. Right. But if I said, I want my daughter to be a heterosexual, I'd be called a bigot. Mm. And homophobe. Yeah. Why is why are we allowing ourselves? Because the majority of people, and I love when you pointed out that the majority of black people are conservative by nature. Mm -hmm. I talked about that little boy, Orlando Perez. One of the one of the things that black men, ever since I was born, you call a person gay and ruin that, that black guy's life. Chingy, the rapper, had his life ruined because a so-called transsexual, Sydney Star. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Came out and lied. And there's been no backlash for the lie that was told. So just like with um, Angela Yee, they're actually encouraging the lie. What can we do to fight back when society is telling us if you're not willing to lie and placate their delusion, you're going to have your whole life, your career, well, everything you have taken to, from you. You have to understand that our government has enabled this. Mm -hmm. Right. Our government has given them the laws and protection that they need to just 
be sexually perverse. And I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, but that's exactly what it is. If we have to walk around all day advertising our sexual preference, then that is a form of perverseness. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a time and a place for everything. So I understand them wanting to write the right to be able to love who they want to love. And I think that they have that right and they deserve that right because adults can make their own decisions. Yes. But what we are seeing now is this lifestyle being forced on everyone else. And it's almost as if, if you don't accept it, then you are the one that's going to be outcast or you are the one that's going to be wrong or you are telling your children the wrong thing like Angela Yee was trying to tell me. And I think that when it comes to freedom of speech, we have to be just as vocal, right, about our beliefs and where we stand. If they can force legislation into our schools and feel as though that they have the right to teach our children about LGBTQ, then us as heterosexuals that may not necessarily believe in that, we should have every right to oppose that education and teach our children what we believe to be is right. Mm -hmm. Let me point something out that Angela Yee is... Um a fan of and ladies and gentlemen we are live with miss angela stanton king she is running for the fifth district here Can in georgia uh, yeah uh, okay. she is running for the fifth district here and we want to make sure that she gets uh in so thank you guys very much for joining us here uh i want to talk about something angela yee said and it was kind of i point out hypocrisy that's just my thing one of the most hypocritical things she said was she said about the LGP kids and said, I'm all about happiness. And she said, they should be able to, if they identify as being a, a, a woman and it's a guy, it's a boy, then happiness, you should let them do that. But she's the same woman who was against this woman by the name of Rachel Dolezal. What did Rachel Dolezal say? Rachel Dolezal said she feels like she's black. How is it that we have a lot of these leftists who when you feel like you're black, we even have it to where if a white girl get cornrows, that's cultural appropriation. There's this thing called black fishing. They're trying to get rid of it because white girls are getting on Instagram and getting a bunch of followers because people think they're mixed or black, but they realize in real life they're white. Why is it that they have a problem with black fishing and cultural appropriation and white girls feeling they're black like Bad Baby and any of them, but they're okay with grown men or little boys saying that they feel like they're women, so placate them. I really wish I had an answer for that. Um, I don't accept it. I don't feel as though that it's okay. I feel as though it takes much more to being a woman than a feeling. Ooh. I think that being a woman, being a single mother, having to sacrifice, not only give birth multiple times, but sacrifice and raising those children and molding those children and creating them into what we want to be. All of the hardships that we've gone up against as women, as single mothers. I think that... Um, there is no way fair that we should have to give our crowns away because we are special. We are the givers of life. We have a womb. Everyone does not have a womb, right? That's mm -hmm. what makes you a mother. I also feel as though it's wrong. I want to say it was Bruce Jenner that got Time Magazine or was it Forbes and got Woman of the Year. It had only been a woman for seven months. But you wasn't a woman then. I know, but I'm saying even that, that word that they so call it's a the woman. Lie. So look how many people you've robbed. And then we know that it's mental health because how do you have a sex change to become a woman just to sleep with women? 40% of people who even, and he didn't even, here's what made his instance so horrible. He didn't have the sex change. He just put on a dress and makeup. Oh God. He didn't have the change. And he said, and, and listen, I said, like you said, I still want to sleep with women. I just feel like a woman. Well, what the crap? But here's, here's the messed up thing. Nobody talks about the statistic that says 40% of those who go through the sexual reassignment sur surgery kill themselves. They want to revert back. You know why? Because reality sets in. That After no they have the surgery, you, you still will not be. So you haven't dealt with the issue because the issue is in the mind and not in the body. Ooh. So if we really love our people, if we really support our people, it's just like a big girl, Lizzo, right? Everybody got Lizzo crunk. Everybody like, <laughs> baby, you look good. Do your thing. Lizzo went to the basketball game with her whole <laughs> behind out because she was just that confident 
in her body. She didn't go have a surgery. She didn't go get a tummy tuck. She didn't try to go get fine. We hyped Lizzo up to let her know that she was beautiful just the way that she was. We can do the same thing with people that are suffering from gender dysphoria. Encourage them mm -hmm. to love themselves because if you are lying to someone just to make them think that Thank they can you. believe become something that they are not, then you are truly doing them a disservice because once they realize that they've been told a lie, then they're going to realize that you really didn't care about them. And you know, it's always, you really didn't love them what is, uh, out of the mouths of babes. Children mm -hmm. will see a grown man in a dress makeup and the kids will ask, why is that man in a dress? Now the kid is supposed to be wrong, but you know what? That reminds me of a story we all should have read when we were young called the emperor's new clothes. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. the emperor's new clothes. Everybody was so afraid of the emperor that they pretended that they saw his clothes when they knew he was walking in the streets naked. It took a child to say, why is the king naked mm -hmm. before everyone was willing to say? We have a society now where cancel culture, and I want to get your opinion on cancel culture because that's what this is. Mm -hmm. People are afraid to step out. People are afraid to be you and step out and be honest because of cancel culture. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to see change? Because America was supposedly built on the one thing of freedom of speech. And right now, well, we definitely we need it. to. We need to protect freedom of speech. And in all honesty, our president is doing everything that he can to protect that. We need to not only protect um, freedom of speech, but we got to be bold in this season because I think that silence, the silence that we've been suffering up under for the last eight years under the Obama administration, has gotten us where we are. Because you noticed there were comedians that were coming out and that were speaking and everybody was being boycotted and you couldn't have a voice. And then here comes Hollywood. They shut you down. Yep. You lose your career. But I think that being silent, look at where we are now. We've got a an entire generation of confused youth. Mm. Um, and those confused youth are going to reproduce and raise <laughs> more confused youth. And I think that it's important for those of us that truly do care and those of us that truly know truth to not be afraid and to speak out. Like, what do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. Right. Because this is a society that our children have to grow in. And one of the things that I realized is being a part of this whole system, right? Being a welfare recipient, all these Democrat policies, right? Being on Section 8 and having, you know, the child's father leave and have to go to prison and raising these kids on my own and being a single mother. I'm working and hustling and trying to keep a roof over their head that while I'm gone, the children raise themselves. Society raised them. Mm -hmm. So what they passed in public schools, right, and what they've taught our children does not align with what we truly believe. And then you turn around one day and you've got these children sitting in front of you and they have a totally different ideology of what you've taught them. And you are wondering, where did they get this from? You didn't get that from me. I didn't raise you like that. But the government has taken out the fathers and implemented their own indoctrine. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're dealing with right now. That's why I wanted to talk about the, the idea that I've always looked at it as vampires can't mate vampire lord they can't mate they can't have sex and have small vampires so what they do is they bite humans and turn them now i looked at what's going on with the whole idea of the the lgbt community now you have where they are taking children and they're having this thing where they're going into schools and they're saying reading with trannies that makes no sense. We would never accept reading with strippers. We did never accept reading with drug dealers. We and, never and since we And since we're in Atlanta, guess who was down there at the county library with the trannies reading to our young children? Our mayor, Keisha Bottoms, okay? Not only did she do that, she also... So so here, here here's the thing. Um, 
when it comes to drag, right? And I've been to a drag show before. Mm -hmm. It's really no different than a strip show, right? It yep. might be a little bit more entertaining, but it's no different than a strip show. So if I wouldn't want strippers reading and sexualizing, because I'm going to make sure I put emphasis on that word, mm -hmm. to my children, why on the county's dime, on the city's dime, on taxpayer money, why are we allowing drag, people dressed in drag, to read to our children and confuse them? Yep. And a lot of times, if you pay attention to some of the drag costumes, they look like demons. Yes. What type of games are we playing? Yep. America. And the fact that why are you even dressed like that? And why children? do you even want to? What's what's the big? Why do you want to read to the children? First of all, I love to interview them. Why why do you feel as though you need to come to the county library, dressed like that, performing like that? Because I've even seen videos of them putting on little strip cheese. Why do you feel like a child needs to see that? Well, that's why I gave you the analogy of vampirism. That they can't produce them themselves, you get them when they're most influential, mm -hmm. when they're children. Because if you get them then, you can direct where they're going. That's why you showed me the picture of the young boy getting his shoulders rubbed, standing in front of Bar Barack Obama, and then years later, he's exactly if what you We don't have a problem with that. If you don't have a problem with that, and many of our young men are fatherless, right? We know mm -hmm. that. Their fathers probably are in prison. This is a single mother trying to raise a son. You understand where I'm coming from? And for our so-called savior, the man that was sent to lead us, right, on into um, paradise, right? Why would he push something like that? That's the question that I have. And so what we're dealing with now is the result of eight years of legislation behind someone that we all voted for just because he looked like us. You're asking all the right questions, ladies and gentlemen. This is Angela Stanton King. She is running for the 5th District make, in here in Georgia. Make sure you go out and vote. I know I will, and I'm going to make sure everyone else gets to vote out. These are the right questions, but you would appear to be, as people would say, a prime candidate for someone to be a Democrat and a leftist, a single mom. You have been, been to jail, you raised kids on your own. How did you get, because I call it getting out of the matrix because I'm the same thing. I've been to jail, got kids like Johnny Appleseed, got a mom who uh, had them just like the same way. But I know the difference between right and wrong. And I saw the wrong. What happened to make you wake up to say, even though I'm in the position to, as they say, go left, I didn't. It was when I was released from prison and um, needed assistance and couldn't get any welfare assistance. Um, because, mind you, I had been used to that system. Because, you know, back in the day, you get out, you get your little welfare or whatever. You get your Section 8, you have your apartment, you hustle on the side. or you <laughs> Y'all know how the game go, right? So um, I couldn't get a job either. Because I was a convicted felon. I was a convicted felon. I was also considered to be a liability because not only was I a convicted felon, but I was a single mother and I had four children and I didn't necessarily have the skill set that I needed to find a job that could be able to maintain a decent lifestyle with four children. Mm -hmm. So after realizing that I would not be able to get those benefits that kept me comfortable because I knew they were coming on the first of the month every month. Um, I realized I had to do something because I had four children looking at me, looking up to me. I was also on federal parole. I was on state parole. Mm. I was on county probation. I, everybody wanted fines everybody paid. Wanted piece of if you. I didn't pay a fine, I was going to jail. And then what was going to happen to my children? So when I was in prison, I, I discovered my gift of writing because I wrote my first book when I was in prison. So I wrote my second book after I got released. That went on to becoming a national bestseller three times. And then from there, I started my own publishing company. It wasn't until I started my own business that I began to understand financial freedom and what it would really take for black America to get free. But my thing was, had I not gone to prison, had I not been denied those benefits, then I would have been a lifelong welfare recipient because I was comfortable. It's almost like you, daddy. You know you're going to take care of your baby girl. 
Yeah. Right. As, as long as you can take care of her, you're going to take care of her even when she gets grown. And I, my father was just like that. I was spoiled. Right. So why is it that, why would I pay rent if I know my daddy going to pay rent every month? Why would I be responsible and get out here on my own and make it happen? If I know that regardless, my daddy is going to take care of me. So having that safety net snatched mm -hmm. out from up under me, right. Having to spread my wings and fly. I realized that a lot of the democratic policies have us stuck and won't allow us to grow as a people. Even when they talk about section eight, for example, and they say, okay, you can live here, but the father can't mm. right. That's a form of family separation right there because a lot of our young men get kicked out at 18 and they go out and they make a family. They need somewhere to go. Maybe they want to go to school. Maybe they don't want to sell drugs. Why can't they stay with the mother of their child? So men get out and they end up getting in multiple relationships, trying to find somewhere to lay their head, going from here to here. The next thing you know, you got child support that you got to pay because this one got mad that you done had another baby with this one. What, we know how the story goes. Why are you telling so my now, story? Oh. I'm a man, right? And I'm working and I'm trying the best that I can, but you pulling everything out of my check because I got to take care of this child over here, which is fine. I had to take care of this child over here and then I can't afford to maintain my lifestyle or the roof that I have over my head. So guess what I do? I pick up a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Well, then when I pick up a side hustle, the minute I get caught, right? Here we go. Joe Biden, three strikes you out. Or here we go, the 1986 Drug Abuse Act, the crack cocaine disparities. You're giving me a life sentence. And now my children out here raising themselves or looking up to their mama. And I come home from prison 10, 15 years later after you decide to release me and my son a whole grown woman. I don't think y'all heard that. We got work to do. And it's up to us. I don't have faith in our government system. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm running for Congress. John Lewis, hey. been there for a long time. Listen, John Lewis marched over Selma Bridge in 1952. And what he marched over the bridge for in 1952, we see ourselves fighting for right now in 2020. So, you know, we appreciate John. I would never ever disrespect him. Um, and we appreciate the work that he has done, but we, we, we're not advancing. Mm -hmm. Why we've been fighting this fight that we fighting for George Floyd and Amal Aubrey back when Rodney King got his ass beat. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all of these people, John Lewis, all of these people, Maxine Waters, mm -hmm. all of these people that Reverend Al Sharpton. Okay. All of these people that we see in these leadership roles that have been fighting for this, where is the change? Yeah, they've been there since the beginning of all of this, and they're still here now. We haven't thought to change the we leadership. We burned L.A. down when Rodney King got beat, terrorized the whole city. The city never even got back right. We still fighting the same fight. So that's one of the reasons why I'm running for Congress. Like, I, I, I feel the plight of our people. I'm a mother. I got three black sons. I got a black brother. I got a black daddy. I got plenty of black cousins. I got a black nephew. You understand? Plenty of black friends. So for me, something has to be done mm -hmm. because the leadership that we are seeing now, the people calling for our youth to riot and not standing out there on the forefront and telling them how to do this peacefully, right? got them going and, and, and robbing people and getting themselves shot or just like a video I posted on my page, getting ran over by a FedEx truck. Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming from? Because they just out there wilding and they don't have any guidance. And you got people calling shots from behind their computer screens in the comfort of their own mansions. Don't make me get into this. Okay, fine. I'm going to do it. King of Atlanta, self-professed. Where you at? T.I. Where you at? T.I. was telling everybody up in Minneapolis, do what it is they do, tear the stuff down. Came to Atlanta, they started tearing down his store. He came out and said, hold on, this is Wakanda. Don't, don't do that. Tear don't tear somebody. my stuff down. Yeah. Tear that stuff down. <laughs> now, mind you, 
T.I. and your Tyreek Nasheeds, and you got a lot of these people, your killer mites, who've done well for themselves, where they came out of poverty, they've moved up and they've started to own their own business. Why is it they don't speak like you, which is that many of us blacks, you, LeBron James really hurt my feelings when he said he wakes up every day and 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 it's white people chasing him, hunting him down. And I was like, Dude, you have that a is Nike not your life, bro. Do you remember the Nike commercial he had? They chasing you down because they want an autograph, right. bro. He <laughs> That's the only reason they chasing you. I thought that was right. hilarious. I said, years ago, he had a commercial where he got out of his front door, just like Ahmaud Aubrey, since they're trying to use that narrative, right. jogging. And when he marched his black ass out of that house, there was hundreds of people running with him. And like you said, they just wanted his autograph. But this is a Nike commercial. You guys can go back and look at it. It's a Nike commercial where they were running behind him as he left his house just because he was able to lead these people to, to just jog, right. to get fit. And they weren't trying to kill him and nothing has happened to him. Yet he'll go around and tell your son, my son, that the biggest fear they have is a white man killing them when that is absolutely not true, especially he could tell them like, like T.I. and Killer Mike, same thing you said, which is the best freedom you have is the ability to be able to go out and spread your wings and not be on the government's teat. Why is it that they're not spreading the message that they themselves have used and become millionaires? Um, I wish I could answer that question. I also wish that I could sit down with T.I. and Killer Mike and Diddy and Block and Rick Ross and all of these people and Future. Let me call and Rocco. You mm. understand where I'm coming from? All of Atlanta, right? Our big boy, Andre, where y'all at? You understand where I'm coming from? And we could come together. We need to have a roundtable discussion because one of the things that I would love for them to understand, they think that somehow the president has more influence over our communities and our youth than they do. I don't, they're delusional. I need to let my brethren, right, know that they have far more influence over our youth than the president. Our youth is not listening to the president. Our youth is not listening to congressmen. They're not listening to the arguments that are on the floor. Yeah, they don't watch They C are Span. listening to our rappers, you know, the ones that say trap or die. Mm. So let's discuss T.I. for a moment. And I applaud T.I. for his success. And I applaud him from for, for building himself up, coming right straight up out of Bankhead. I've known that man for a very long time. I remember when they used to ride around in country daddy pickup truck, you know, and was doing some real dope boy stuff back in the day. They have all advanced, and I'm very, very proud of them. But, you know, when I think about what they represent, and I've been there, right? So it's hard for me to have this conversation because I was a ride or die. I can sing all the Gucci Man songs. I know all the hits. Jeezy. I'm every, Jeezy I now. was all I, I was all in the mix. You understand where I'm coming from? Ryan, that Snoop, all of them. I know all the hits. But I also know how much influence their songs not only had over me, but had over our generation. Because when we start talking about the dope boy, everybody wanted to be the dope boy. Not every, not only did everybody want to be the dope boy, but all the girls, you didn't want a man unless he was the dope boy. A regular work, working man seemed to be a lame to you. Mm -hmm. This is the culture. You understand where I'm coming from? We're not knowing how we're setting up ourselves for fa for failure. I, like, I haven't been able to tell my stories yet about when I was with the dope man. And or, I want to say something. Or the leader of, of, the, of the gang and how many times my doors got kicked in and I lost everything and... Before you finish, I want to say something to you. Like a lot of people were asking, what is that number on the top there? That number that keeps moving, do y'all know where that number is going? To the young lady right here. Whatever that number reaches, you didn't really? know it either. I didn't tell you. I didn't tell anybody. But whatever that number reaches right there in the green, whatever so it says sweet. on the show. Hey, y'all on my live, get, <laughs> get off my live. Go ahead over to Tommy's YouTube. He's raising money for the campaign. Yes, ma'am. I need y'all to get over. Shayla, can you I saw that people didn't realize what it was going. Y'all know I usually do this when it when I'm live on the show. Well, what you guys don't know is every dime that is raised it. goes into this young lady's pocket right it. at the end of the show. So I appreciate we it. need this campaign to go because, like she said, 
We have a lot of people who've been talking uh, uh, about our plight for the last 70 years. We appreciate everything they've done, but it's right. time for new leadership. And it's time for some people like you, like me, who have said, America has an opportunity that yes. we as blacks probably don't have anywhere else. I wouldn't be able to live the way that I live. I got a horrible ass background. And here we, I am. Oh. Well, I had. We right. still have it. It's our background. Right. But we've been able to move past that and still reach the American dream. Right. The fact that I'm listening to you right now, a black woman who's challenging John Lewis mm -hmm. and is not only challenging him for the seat, but it's challenging him for the ideas and the minds of our youth. Yes. Because like you said, most of them don't even know who he is or what they he's don't. done. Don't, don't even know what he looked like. Right. He got a white wife. Uh, but I'm a... <laughs> you said he got a white husband? No, he got a white wife, but oh. he got a white wife. But they, a lot of people don't know that. I'm going to throw that out there. But Is but, he married to... Yes. He's been I married to that white woman for a long time. I didn't know John Lewis was married. Yes, he's been married to a white woman for a long time, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. just want y'all right. to know that ladies just want y'all to know that but um all right but 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 the minds of our youth like you said people like ti and jeezy had they had my mind they had and, yours and 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 and, 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 and and even with the trap museum right and if you go visit the trap museum everything in there represents a trap you know it is a trap you understand where i'm coming from and you have it's all about jail and it's all about drugs and it's all about death. So when we're talking about being upset at the president for making a statement about looting and shooting, we also have to be upset about allowing our children to listen to their idols talking about robbing and shooting and kill a nigga and F a B and if she ain't, how are we going to demand someone else value our lives if we don't even value our lives, how are we going to demand someone else to respect our women? They'll get mad. They got mad at Trump for saying Omarosa was a dog after they done called us bees and hoes and, and sluts so much you that Amber called Rose. called his own baby mama this on Twitter. They done, this called, they done called us sluts so much. Amber Rose thinks she a slut and I went and started a whole slut walk. And got hundreds of thousands of young females following behind them. This is how much influence our entertainers and rappers have. Oh. Accountability. We got to fix this whole thing from the inside out. So you can't say, right, we don't want them killing us. And I'm all for that. I'm black. Black lives matter. Absolutely. Right? I believe that. Who is God? <laughs> Look at God. Hey, it, God moves, it moves. It moves. Did y'all, Mike? Did y'all go over to YouTube and, and find Tommy's Shayla? <laughs> can you come pin Tommy's Cash app down here for those of you that want to donate? He's donating to the campaign. If we could get Shayla to come over here. Every dime that's in green goes the to the young lady down here. Down here to his. Okay, so. Yeah, you're just going to have to type it in there. Yes, yeah, it's just uh, TJ Sotomayor. That's it. Just TJ S-O-T-O-M-A-Y-O-R. So, it's right there on the screen right so there. So I yeah. can appreciate. Yeah, and then you're probably going to have to put it back. Just probably the whole thing it because it only gives you an hour. So it's probably going to make it. No, it goes again. longer than an hour. Really does? Yeah, they reset it. Oh, no. Just turn it up. This. Yeah. So I think, I think that um, in actuality, right, I do appreciate the fact that T.I. has a voice and mm -hmm. he can reach our youth. But I think messaging is important. I have an issue with, with, with the mayor of Atlanta, right? Standing on a platform with the same people that told our youth to go burn down the city. And then when they get caught burning down the city, you're going to try to throw them in prison for life. That's a trick. Yep. You understand? Why are you calling for them to go on the front line to damage property, to destroy their own communities, but you are not calling for peace all the way around the board? We got We don't want the police killing us. I'm all for police reform, right? But I also don't want us killing us. Amen. Because if you want me to tell you the truth, can I be honest? Let's do it. I'm from the hood. I'm from Summerhill, right? Atlanta, mm -hmm. zone three, right? And every person that I've lost... Every friend, every homeboy, every family member, every person that I've buried has been at the hands of one of us. Yep. So 
my pain as a mother, right? Let's just say if a police officer killed my son or if one of us killed my son, my pain is the same. It's there, there is no difference. My son is still gone. So when we are talking about valuing life, we have to rethink this thing and we have to begin to understand how much influence. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Did you put that on there? <laughs> Let me do it. Give it to me. Yes. This is my people. Good. Stop the whole These are my people. Yeah. It's right there. It's TJ S O T O M A Y O R. It's right on the screen. TJ S O T O. TJ S O T O. Thank you. Uh, it's S O T O M A Y O R. TJ Sotomayor. Y O R. O R. Mm hmm. It's Soto Mayor. TJ Soto Mayor. T-J-S-O-T-O-M-A-Y-O-R. O-R. Mm -hmm. right. Soto Mayor. That's what I did. Okay, hold on. Oh, somebody came on here and put it on here for us. <laughs> All you got to do is pin it. Here. Yeah. When they write it, just press pin. On the side, there'll be a thing okay. allow you to pin it. Okay. Hold so on. whatever that person put, you can just go. Yep. And you can click on right beside it and put right, pin. Cool. So now it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we got to put the thing back. So there you go. And... There it is. Let me make sure I get this camera on. Okay, cool. What you, what you so what I was talking about, we're focusing on trying to rebuild our community, and we need to understand who are the people are that have the prolific voices. Who are our children listening to? I can guarantee you nine times out of ten when you get out of work and come in the house, your children ain't listening to the president. They're listening to YouTube. You understand where I'm coming from? Or they're listening to what our rappers are saying. So we need to make sure that the people that we give the platforms to, the people that have the voices, are spreading the right message. Mm -hmm. And what we've been doing up until this point hasn't given us the answer. So it's time for us to come up with something different. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, right? Right. Y'all know that I'm not perfect. I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm not perfect. But I am righteous. And I know that the only way we're going to make things better for us is if we get in Congress and create the laws that reflect, right, the things that we need mm -hmm. in order to succeed. I'm with you on that. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for showing the support and showing the love. Uh, on that cash app, uh, all of this is going to go to Miss Angela Stan King and her trying to unseat Mr. John Lewis, who's yes. been there since Buck was a heifer. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to unseat this man, but we do need uh, fresh blood out there. Let's talk a little bit more about something I, I seen that happened when you were on uh, The Breakfast Club. It was really sad to me that they went after you way harder than they went after Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And I brought that up and I said that. I said, we watched these people attack a black woman on a black show. But when the white man came, they gave him one-on-one -on -one access, no triple team. Yep. And he gave him a couple minutes because his wife had to go and do something about on a cooking show. And his answer was, you ain't black if you don't vote for right, me. Right, so don't but ask I, me a tough question. So but can all I, they asked you was tough questions, so talk about that. So first of all, I just want to say in the infamous words of Joe Biden, if y'all don't vote for me, y'all ain't black, okay? <laughs> just so you just, know. I just want to say in the infamous words of Joe Biden, no, but in all seriously, I felt that um, that was a really low blow. You understand? Like, people, we deserve more than that. We deserve more than if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Just yep. like we deserve more than abortion. You understand mm. where I'm coming from? As a people, we deserve more than that. And if you are someone that has been in Congress, and we're not even talking about just the eight years he did with Obama, we're talking about over a span of 40 years or more that Joe Biden has been in office. And that's the only answer that you can come up with when they ask you what your plight is for black people. And if we accept that, then that shows that just how shallow and blinded we are. Because one thing about the Democrat Party, what they have been good at, is putting people before us that look like us and say they identify with us, but they really don't. Mm -hmm. They don't identify with us. It's just a job to them. 
You understand where I'm coming from? And we see all of this political battle going back and forth, voting against this law, voting against that law. One minute COVID is real. The next minute COVID is not real. These people over here wearing a mask, but they had a funeral with George Floyd and they said George Floyd body had coronavirus. What y'all doing at the dog? They said he had coronavirus when he passed away. Then we go to a rally. We spreading coronavirus. What's going on? See y'all playing politics yep. to sway the vote and people are suffering. And I got really upset with what I just saw happen recently, right? With this whole COVID scare, because I'm smart enough to pay attention to the numbers. I'm watching right on Georgia.gov. I'm paying attention to the COVID cases. I'm realizing that this is only 1% of people that are catching this disease and it is being fatal. And not only that, all of these people had underlying issues. Now, we're not saying that COVID isn't real, mm -hmm. but the question is, is it as serious as they say it is? Because I'm looking at all of these celebrities that claim to have had COVID. Idris Elba, right? Andy from Housewives of Atlanta, DL right? DL now just came out and said he had it. I saw DL when he passed out on the stage. Let me go back to something else. We're going to get into DL in a minute because <laughs> DL always talking. We're going to get on the DL in a minute. We're going to get on DL in a minute. God bless my brother, even though he talk about me like a dog. Don't worry, me and him used to be Even though he talk about me like this. a dog, just because of my political affiliation, not because I've done anything wrong to our people. Dude, we but we just to be because I choose to we be a knew. Republican, the man talk about me like a dog. But let me get back to this point mm -hmm. that I'm trying to make. But when in the beginning, when we saw these celebrities coming out with it, and even the guy on CNN, Como, right? He was in his basement isolating. It was like, okay, they caught COVID, but it was never any vaccination for it. It was never any medicine for it. And then they just magically healed out of nowhere. We never saw Everyone. them with any symptoms or anything like that. It just magically went away. So I'm like, why are we fear mongering the people? How is it that this disease is so deadly that these celebrities can just put up a post, not even look ill, say they have it. And then 10 years later, I mean, 10 days later, after self isolating with no medication, they are magically healed. So is this really about COVID or is this really about forcing people to stay home, making them lose their jobs, mm. making businesses close, crashing the economy so you can blame it on Trump? and think that it'll help you win the election. Because now what we're hearing is, oh, Trump destroyed the economy. Oh, Trump let a hundred and something thousand people die. Well, wait a minute. If we can't open our businesses, how, how is it that Walmart, my business is not gonna have as many people as Walmart in it. I might get 10 people in my business and one day I've got a small business. If Walmart can social distance, why can't I social distance? Mm. If Target can social distance, well, my business is essential too because it's essential to my survival. Amen. So why are we allowing the people to suffer while we play politics and try to sway the vote? I want you to do me a huge favor. I'm going to put this on the screen. They're going to see it. But I want you to read this. And ladies and gentlemen, you can read exactly what she's reading on the screen right now. Read it out loud for them. This is your girl, your bartender. Uh oh. <laughs> That's my baby calling. I gotta call her back. That's my oldest baby calling me. Okay, so this is your bartender, AOC. AOC says it's vital that governors maintain restrictions on businesses until after the November elections because economic recovery will help Trump be reelected. A few business closures or job losses is a small price to pay to be free from his presidency. Keep us closed. 25,000 retweets, 17,000 likes. This is AOC. Now, tell me what you think why do I have to lose my business? Cause let me just tell you all something. Before I ran for office, I was a small business owner, okay? And I struggled to start my business. And I risked a lot to invest in my business and to start my business as a single mother at the time and a black woman. 
So after investing and sacrificing and putting my all into my business, why do I have to lose my business because you want power back up under the Democrat Party? You don't want to empower me as a person because as long as you have your power, you don't care what happens to me. I can lose my business. I can go crazy. I can suffer from depression. Well, see how I can try to kill myself. Sacrificing. You have to sacrifice your business. Whatever she's got going, it's enough to keep her afloat. Whatever they got going, the big wigs that we were talking and about. And then mind you, this whole time that we've been in this, whatever you want to call it, up under COVID and people have not been able to make money, your people in Congress have still been getting paid. And this is with your tax dollars. So if we can't make money, the citizens why are we paying people in Congress? Do you know I would have been the first person to vote that everyone's pay gets suspended until we get America back up and going? Mm. Which would force them to say, since they're not getting paid to, let's work to make this thing work for everyone. And you hear this woman telling you to sacrifice your check, sacrifice your business, sacrifice your legacy. While she's while still she getting paid. Because they want power. Is this not? Because they want to push the Equality Act and turn our little boys into princesses. Because they want to fund the abortion of our babies. And they know that all of their abortion clinics are in minority areas. Is this not treason? It's treason. It look like a duck. Walk like a duck and quack like a duck. We won't talk about the treasonous nature of the left what they have been doing. And I uh, put up a tweet and I think people have picked it up. Uh, I mean, I put it up on uh, Instagram and I said it on my show. I said, it seems like the cure for COVID is racism. Hmm. Or <laughs> protesting. Or pro protesting. Cause cause telling us to stay in, but we could go to George Floyd funeral. We couldn't we go, go to church. Easter Can't Sunday. Easter Sunday. Let me tell you something. I was raised, right? My mother was a preacher and a prophet. I was raised in a very, very religious My household, right? Well. And she used to make us go to church all the time. We went to church. I'm so tired of you. She is. My mom was a preacher. That's how I ended up getting close to TDJ. The preacher, the cottonell, the all of this is too much. So <laughs> we got a story Jack, about the cottonell. We're not gonna tell y'all, but listen. <laughs> so um, and she was a preacher and, and I had to go to church like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. She kind of drained me in church. So now, you know, I might go to church every other Sunday, but I make sure that I go to church on Easter. Now y'all know people that ain't been to church all year round, they, they go to church on Easter. These people closed the church down on Easter, y'all. We couldn't go to church, but we could protest and burn our community. People down. missed you gotta wake up. Miss graduation. People, oh my God, I'm getting ready to graduate. They just sent me an email saying that I have to have a virtual ceremony. Guys, do you know how long I have waited to go back and get my education and walk across that stage with well, my bachelor's in psychology? They just sent me an email saying that I cannot walk across the stage, but I got to see all of our black leaders, the ones that's been telling us, stay in the house, don't open your business, all of them at George Floyd funeral. All of our Democrat leaders, all of them at George Floyd funeral. Why is it that they only show up, right, when it's time to highlight something or when it's time to ride the wave? Where are you any other time? So how is it safe for everybody to go to George Floyd? <laughs> I'm getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> you in the school for what? Now they get it. Now they get it. Listen. <laughs> God, dog. It's too oh. much. Oh my goodness. We got to wake up people. We got to oh. wake up. Tommy is having a, 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 a um what do you call it? A epiphany <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. He's going to be fine. <laughs> we have to wake up as a people and I just think that at the end of the day, we got to do something different. You know what I'm saying? And I, like even if I get in here on the floor and let's say that I wanted to fire to ask for reparations that's no guarantee that they're going to give black people reparations you understand and another thing they look at welfare as a form of reparations I know y'all not ready for this conversation uh -oh. and don't want to hear it we got all day we're going to take a we're going to take a break here soon so you we can go and release some <laughs> of us and fresh out drink and we're going to come back and keep on talking about this uh, do, do you need a, a couple minutes right now so we, sure. can, we can break? Hey guys, here's what we're gonna do, and I'm glad that you guys are hitting it. We I was gonna say we got we're gonna have a drive for five, but I think we've already met. 
Wow, you guys. We're thank almost you, there. Sweet thing. Somebody help us get to five. Yeah, I was going to say a drive for five, but we're <laughs> about we to hit to, five, so we, we need get, to get When we get to five, when we get to five, we'll take our break. Yeah, we, we, we're going to take a break. I, I, she's not going to take a break, so whatever she's been drinking, she's going to have to hold it. And y'all know y'all making this young woman hold it until we get right. The brother said, uh, uh, low RCS said we need a drive for 10. I want y'all yes. to hit that cash app to where we can get that drive for five right now. So we can get that thing out so she can go and take a small break and I can take a break too. We're at 49.57 right now. Hit the cash app, it's T-J-S-K-O-C and y'all know I will, I'm probably gonna play a little song for you guys, one of mine during the break. Um, oh Lord, don't tell me the man sing too. Oh no, girl, oh, I, do, wow. I do, but but it's oh, it's it's my I, when I was younger, I used to rap. So okay, so it's it's actually not bad. People have been buying it, so I think I used all to rap them, too. You don't want do you, you want to pull mine up? I, I will YouTube. pull it up. You gonna pull it up and play it for? I, I, I'll pull it up if you want me to. Pull up. Do y'all do y'all want to see? It's Throwback Thursday, so do y'all want to see when I used to rap? Don't I don't believe if y'all clown on me. <laughs> if y'all clown on me, okay, so go to YouTube. Oh, hold on a second, let's pull it up. <laughs> This is so hilarious. So right, this is, is, I don't know if you guys remember Ben Hill Day in Atlanta, but type in Lady Lennox, L-A-D-Y. Oh, crap. Uh, uh -huh. Lennox. Like Lennox Mall? Uh-huh. Boy, stop. Boy, stop? Yes. Okay, watch this. I'm going to tell you. There it is. Hold Lady on. Lennox at Ben Hill Day in 2008. I want you to hold on a second. Oh, my you, gosh, guys. I want you to read what my, what my, <laughs> what, what my comments are. What's one of my favorite sayings that I say to people, ladies and gentlemen? Watch what they write. Oh, my what is God. What's one of my favorite oh my lines God. that I say? Oh, my God. Let me see. What is one of my favorite lines that I say? It better not be, boy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I said to everybody, boy, stop. I told her that's oh, something we say here in Atlanta. Somebody boy, says stop. you better not be twerking. <laughs> no, I wasn't twerking. <laughs> Listen to the words. Pay attention to the words. But he's going to play this song for you all while we take a quick break and then we're going to come back. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm going to And I'm going to take my phone. You guys that are on my live, I'm going to turn the phone around so you guys can watch the screen and see the video too. So this so, is going to be Yeah, it. so I'm going to let you guys see. <laughs> this is the video, right? That's the video. Okay, so we're about to watch this video, watch this song. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back since the drive for five is alive. Now we're going to have a drive for 10. We're five, three, 11, 77. And this is Lady Lennox. <laughs> also the woman who's running for the fifth district Congress here in Georgia to unseat Mr. John Lewis. Yep. And that's my baby, my hype man, my oldest daughter, Aaliyah. She is a lawyer now, but that's my hype man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We're going to take a look at this and guys, we will be right back in a minute. Take a look and enjoy. Mercedes Benz, he ain't got no money, he ain't got no ice, no time for niggas unless they money right. I got my Gucci bag and my diva swag, I got a whole lot of sh ain't no need to brag. And you hold so cause you see me out here ballin' like the pros do. Get, get, get it. All my independent women who got their own house and they own we buy the ball. Hood lady, put it on a, make a jug lady. Get some life. Get some swag. Stop popping at the mouth and pop tag. This is 08. What's that? Yeah, you got, she walked outside. Right
Bosta! Bosta! <laughs> and walk off the stage. Just walk off. Okay, I I know I gotta go reuse the bathroom too myself, but I gotta say something right now. How does it feel to watch? Because I know when I listen to myself, the song that I'm about to play is, is is old. And most of the stuff I have is like 20 years or 15 years old. But how does it feel to know? I think it goes back to me, what you were saying when even as adults, we evolve. Right. And yet we're still trying to push on children that yes. they can make a permanent decision. And it was shocking to me that um, the people at the Breakfast Club didn't know what you knew, which was, oh, no, they are actually giving them hormone blockers to be able to change them. And they're making these decisions at eight. Right. Seven, six, five. Um, it's scary. It's scary because what happens when you make a decision that's irreversible Ooh. and you can't go back? Um, they were saying, you know, how the children could be depressed mentally now if you don't let them do what they want to do well what's gonna happen when you do let them do what they want to do and you're the parent and you were the one that was supposed to protect them and you were the one that was supposed to guide them and you didn't guide them into making the right decision you know we could have some people that are happy when they cut themselves or people that are happy when they take drugs or when they shoot up heroin are you just going to give them the knife to cut themselves? Or are you just going to give them the hair on to shoot up in their system just because it makes them feel happy? There are I guys who are happy when they rape people. There are guys who are happy when they abuse people. When they, she said that, people, that had to be the most ridiculous. There are people that are happy when they sexually abuse children mm. as well. And when they have sex with children as well. So we don't just do what we want to do. Because or just let someone be involved in dangerous behavior just Amen. because it makes them feel good. So I think that interview at the Breakfast Club is enough to wake all of us up and make us realize what it is that we are up against. And are we going to be silent or are we going to say enough is enough? And we're going to stand and come together and do what's right. Because at the end of the day, we can let the Democrat go. We can let the Republican go. We can let the black go. We can let the white go. We can let the gay go, the straight go, the Muslim go, the Christian. We can let all of that go and decide, are we going to do what we know is right? Where do you stand morally? That's what this election is about. Where are your values as a person? And are you going to vote for children to be sexualized and for babies to be aborted. Where are you? I want to say this before we finish the break. How do you feel or how did it make you feel? I don't know if you even know it. Charlemagne came out and said, you made them look ridiculous. I heard that Charlemagne said that and I can appreciate his honesty. <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least that is a man that is not ashamed to tell the truth. And um, I really don't think that I made them look bad. I think that um, they kind of made themselves look bad. I think that I was just there to enlighten our community. And I think that all of the pushback that I received from them let our people know how hard. And I mean, this is this is us on us, right? So mm -hmm. this is a black outlet. I am a black woman. Everything is all about black lives. So if you see how I was treated there, imagine how I'm treated elsewhere mm. by people that are not even my own. So I would think that what we need to do is allow our people to make informed decisions by giving them the full truth, right? Stop pushing a lie. Stop allowing these people to lie to our young women and tell them that abortion is healthcare when we know that that's not true. You understand? Mm -hmm. Stop allowing these people to lie to our young men and tell them that they can be women or they can be princesses when we know that it's not true, right? Mm -hmm. We can still love and support our friends and their decisions, but we can also protect the minds and the innocence of our youth. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to this small little break and y'all know I love to play my song. So we're going to go to this break and we're going to be right back. I am so honored that you are here. I don't even know how to stop being ecstatic as I am right now. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. And remember, we had to drive for five. We made that. So 
Fuck it. There's a drive for 10 on the floor. We'll be right back. Wow. Mm-hmm. It ain't, you don't have no way to open up the lines and let people call you. You want me to? I think you yeah, should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's easy for me to let people call.
ask me any questions. Tommy is getting ready to open up the phone lines. Go grab your pen and your pad or get your phone or whatever so you can write down this telephone number right quick. And we're going to let you guys call in and let's talk. I want to hear from you. So we're going to do it uh, two ways. And thank you guys for being here. One of the ways that I like to bring people on is that I get to actually see them. So for the people who are wondering, uh, remember my uh, moderators, make sure you put that link right there in the description box. The link um, will bring people to be able to click that and you'll be able to come on here and join us. And I'm going to make sure that it's in the description box as well. Let me see if I type that in there. Click here to join the show. There we go. All right. So the link is in the description box, but if you don't mind, would my moderators go ahead and put that link out there? I would like, Jennifer says she's calling, of course. Uh, and if I have to open up a phone line, I will. But right now, uh, the easiest way for you guys to come join us is to click that link and you'll be able to get on here and join us on the show. Looks like someone's already there. Before I even got started, just your girl has joined <laughs> on the show. So we're going to bring um, her in and everyone else that might want to come and join us. I can put it a little over here. Uh, so what I want to do is have you guys come on here and join. It looks like a lot of people are joining on. Uh, the show number is, well, I'm not going to put the number up yet until we uh, get this in. Uh, but a lot of people are joining right now. Uh, let me ask you something before we go into it. Why do you think blacks are so against conservatism when typically that's our nature? Why is it that it's been sold to us? Um, if you remember, Malcolm X said a long time ago, he who controls the media controls the masses. So what we're looking at is a generation that's been fed lies by a biased media. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we've researched truth when it comes to the Republican Party. I don't think many of us are aware of the fact that the Republican Party was created to abolish slavery. And the first 23 black congressmen were conservatives. Um, not only did the Republican Party free the slaves, but they also gave them citizenship and gave them voting rights as well. So if you look down throughout history, you'll see that any time that there's been a major civil rights issue that the majority of Democrats have voted against it. Now, this is just truth. So they say and they tell us, hey, look, the party switched. We hear this all the time, mm -hmm. right? But I happen to have some inside information that everyone may not know. And so this is how the whole ideology came about the party switch. When Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested and we all heard that story about him being taken down to that prison in Reedsville. And he said that he would never, ever, ever go back down that way again. Well, when Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested, his father, Martin Luther King Sr., called John F. Kennedy who was a congressman at the time. And she says, hey, look, I've got a suitcase full of votes for anyone that can get my son out of jail. And so John F. Kennedy immediately went to work. He called the president, which was Nixon at the time, and Nixon wouldn't touch it because of all the racial issues that were going on at that time. And then he contacted the governor of Georgia at that time. And I want to make sure I have his name right. I want to say it was Vladimir. I may not be pronouncing it correctly. So he contacts the governor of Georgia and he ends up getting Martin out of prison. After he got Martin out of prison, John F. Kennedy ran as ran for the presidency, but he ran as a Democrat. You mean Roosevelt? No. Roosevelt. Oh, you said it's president. No. Because Nixon, Nixon was the president in the late 70s. Nixon, this, happened, this happened when Nixon was the president, when Martin got arrested. Remember, Nixon was only president after Kennedy was killed. Okay, so. So it had to be Roosevelt. Okay, so Roosevelt. There you go. So, <laughs> contacted him. He wouldn't touch it. He wouldn't get him out of jail. So I'm sorry, Eisenhower. So Eisenhower. They they corrected us both. Eisenhower, because Eisenhower's speech when he left was beware of the um the 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 the, the machine that runs um what what was it that what was the speech, guys? Eisenhower said beware of the uh the people who run Listen, the Nixon business. Nixon was the owner. vice president. Yeah, Nixon was vice president. Okay, so anyway, let's get back to the story. John F. Kennedy runs, right, for president as a Democrat. 
right? To bust up their whole thing because he knew that it was racist. Right. And of course, that's why they killed him. But after getting Martin out of jail, black people followed John F. Kennedy. So we never really thought about the ideologies changing within the party. They just blindly followed John F. Kennedy to the Democrat Party because he freed Martin from jail. Well, the ideology of the parties never changed because remember they were killing us then and they're killing us now. But see, now they've gotten slicker because they've taken the blood off of their hands and put us on our hands and said, we're going to give them a choice to legally, right, kill their children before their children are born. And in the famous words of Margaret Singer, the best way to get rid of a nigga is to kill him before he's born. And that's what we see right now. I brought you down this road for a reason. Because and guys, go ahead and click on there, and I'll bring you guys in in a minute. It looks like it's full right now. Um, I brought you down this road for a reason. Because you have people bringing up Donald Trump, these same black people who used to say his name every five minutes in rap songs as success in America. Now mm -hmm. they believe he's racist out of the blue. They've been told he's racist. They don't know he's racist. And you talked about what happened then. They've been told to do something, but they didn't understand that one of the biggest racists was a Democrat. His name was Lyndon Baines Johnson, mm -hmm. who said that if you give me these uh, social programs, I I'll had have these, these niggas, niggas voting vote Democrat for the next 200 years. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but they're talking about what, um, I see they tried to do that to you on uh, Breakfast Club. They tried to bring up what Donald Trump said of he only wanted Jews and I uh, forgot who else uh, to rent his buildings. But these same people vote for Hillary Clinton, who was hugging uh, Mr. Bird, who was a grand wizard. Who also said that we were super predators that needed to be brought to heal. Now, I ain't never seen nothing heal but a dog. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Heal, H-E-E-L, is mm -hmm. a command for a dog. Yep. Hillary Clinton stated that we are super predators and we need to be brought to heal. Not only did she state that, Joe Biden says it doesn't matter how we got that way. We are beyond the pale and cannot be rehabilitated. So the best thing to do is to lock us away so that his children and his wife are protected. Why is it that Charlemagne the God can't recognize, even if he had rec didn't recognize it before? Once he was told by that same man who made that statement that I don't have to answer any questions you have for me as a journalist, that either you vote for me or you're not black. Why is it that that didn't set off waves amongst black people that should have been to where we at least said, because I always say this, black people, we claim we're diverse. Well, why is it that we can only listen to rap and R&B when we claim we created rock, but as soon as somebody listens to it, well, they're, they're acting white. No white person gets told they're acting black if they vote Democrat or Republican. Right. But black people, right? we're expected to do something. That to me is, what did they call it? The low expectations of, uh, uh, the soft expectations of bigotry? Right. That shows that they don't expect, the, the Democrats, they don't expect us to have a mind of their own, mm -hmm. of our own. Why is it that Charlemagne, T.I., Killer Mike, LeBron James, and a lot of these people aren't at least calling that part right there. That wasn't a wake up moment. That wasn't a watershed moment. That when he said, my wife, Talking about baked goods is more important than me telling you black people what my agenda is. Why did that get missed? What I've realized is that we always talk about the elites, but they're also an elite group of black people that feel like they are better than other black people. Okay? Right. And they feel as though, <laughs> you know, all black people don't deserve to be on the level that they are in. You know, somebody has to be poor. As long as it ain't me, we're going to keep them poor, right, as we continue to grow. So I think what we have to understand is just like you have elite people that look at, you know, disadvantaged white people as trailer trash, mm -hmm. you also have an elite group of black people that look at some of us as hood rats and, you know. And we need to stay there. And we need to stay there. Hello, somebody. Ooh. You know, they want you to do good, but just not better than them. 
<laughs> it reminds me of y'all know them Django. folks where y'all at y'all remember them people mm. y'all know the people that want you they to do good the they just dude. don't want you to do better than them okay you know what it reminds me of i don't know if you you probably haven't watched anything like that but there was a movie called scooby-doo and in scooby-doo it was one black person that was cool with all the scooby-doo people and he ran up into this other group of people who were scooby-doo friend, friends like that and they themselves had only one black person the two black people saw each other and said, hey, I'm supposed to be the only black guy here. Think about how often that happens with us. Mm -hmm. That when one make it, they will help make sure the other ones don't. Yep. They don't want to share the spot. They don't want to give it up. It, it was too hard for them to get there. They scared somebody else going to take it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But again, that's what I was talking about on The Breakfast Club about you know them saying, oh, the government won't do this, the government won't do that. Well, enough of us got money. Come on, do we need Black to call Wall them out? should have been built. Come Rebuilt on, man. Oprah. How much? Uh, all of these I, people y'all got in shots. Forbes magazine, y'all talking about with the Kardashians, we might as well say they black. <laughs> they got money. You understand where I'm coming from? They got money. They Kanye got, got, they build them Kanye got right money. Jay-Z got money. Diddy got money. Beyonce got money. They have enough money. Preaching. It's enough of them that have money. Preaching. Tyler Perry got money. Preaching. Oprah got money. Preaching. Magic Johnson got Still money. Preaching. I'm just saying there are enough of us and they have accumulated enough wealth where if and then hold on, not to mention that. Let's talk about something that we just saw and I spoke about this on the show with Young Pharaoh on yesterday. Mm hmm with the world health organization we know that in the beginning they told the president that coronavirus was not transmissible from human to him human and they also told him it was safe for him to leave the borders open for people to travel right the president did go against their advice and close the borders right but he also defunded them later on after he learned that they put the entire united states at, at risk. risk so what did we see we saw all of these celebrities and entertainers get together to raise billions of dollars. Well, millions. I'll say millions of dollars for the World Health Organization. Well, why y'all can't get those same celebrities to come together to raise millions of dollars to rebuild Black Wall Street? Why y'all can't get those same celebrities together to raise millions of dollars to get our children out of the ghetto and give them opportunity? Why y'all raising money for people that already got money? We don't raise 11 Why million. Why you raising dollars? money for people that ain't going to do nothing? And then let me tell y'all something else. All these people are that are in our communities that were able to leave their businesses open when we were suffering during the COVID crisis. And we had to close our businesses and we lost our jobs. So let's talk about these gas stations. Let's talk about these corner stores, right? These restaurants that are in our hoods. J.J. Fish is one of them. Now, I love me some J.J. Fish. <laughs> I'm going to go in there and get my fish fried extra crispy with my hot sauce, my square white Wonder Bread. That's what I like. My frozen lemonade. I like J.J.'s Fish. But every time I go in J.J.'s Fish, one of the things that I realize is that they always going to have a black face at the front at the register to greet you because they know that they are in your community they know what you identify with but that black face ain't going no further than that cash register then not only that remember they are look how they treat us they always want to keep the seasoning salt on the chain <laughs> you can take my money but you gonna give me some seasoning salt that's on the chain you scared that i'm gonna run out your store but these businesses, right, that were allowed to continue to make money in our communities when we were forced to lose our jobs and shut down, did those people do anything for your communities? Did they have any drives? Did they raise any money? Did they give away any food? Did they give away any water? Did they give away anything that we needed for our survival? These are some of the people that we need to begin holding accountable. Because if you allow these people to come into your community, they get rich, right? This is why I want to see black people own stuff in their own communities because this is what happened. So when they come into our communities, right, and we talk about our economy and, 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 and money staying in our economy. So let's just say, for instance, you have a show. Mm -hmm. Let's just say if I wanted to pay you to produce my show, 
right? We live in the same neighborhood. So I might give you $300 to produce myself. Mm -hmm. You might take that $300 and have to use that $300 to go, um, um, buy groceries okay and then the people that's at the grocery store might use that three hundred dollars to pay some of their employees that work in the grocery store so that money circulates and it stays in our economy but when you have a lot of foreigners and and this is not against anybody that is a foreigner or immigrant i just got to get my people game right now and I, mm -hmm. i'm not trying to hurt anybody feelings i just got to put it out there like it is but when you have um foreigners coming to our communities right and they make their money off of us the majority of the time they send their money back home yes to take care of their families so that money does not stay in our economy and it does not circulate in our economy black money matters hello somebody amen anybody do you understand or you may know it that if you took the black spending dollar in the united states alone it would be the ninth largest nation on the planet gdp mm -hmm. we realize how much money we have but people pander to us mm -hmm. when hillary clinton went on the breakfast club they didn't even call her out for talking about having hot sauce in her purse. Mm -hmm. We've become a cliche instead of an actual group of people. We've become a hashtag instead of an actual group of people who are utilizing the political power that they have, the political, uh, um, what, what would be the word to talk about what it is that we actually have power to do? And what is it you're gonna bring to us or shed the light? Because remember, they told, Barack Obama told us, I'm not the president of black America. I'm the president of America. But yet they always ask, well, Donald Trump, what have you done? <laughs> but if Donald Trump said, I'm not the president of black America, I'm the president of America. He'd he be called a racist. racist. I think what I know we need, I know what we need. We need to be educated on access to loans. We need money. Let's just, mm. let's just, let's just put it out there. We need money. Um, that's the reason why the majority of us commit crimes is because we want money. We're watching um, on TV and, and, and we're being um, mesmerized, right? With all of these different ideologies and all we see on TV is the person with the big house and the person with the nice car and the person that's living the life. And that's what we want, right? And we desire that. And we see that the things that we're doing is not getting that. So they take chances, right? And do anything they can to try to have that type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's attainable, but we need to teach our people how to get it the right way. Yes. My baby, call her. Yeah, call Imani. Tell her I'll be there in a little bit or she can catch an Uber home. I think that um, our people need to be educated on how to get these loans. They need to be educated on how to build their credit. They need to be educated on how to take advantage, right? Of all these resources that everyone else is taking advantage to. So when you have all of these specialized groups, right? Mm -hmm. When we say, okay, well, we've got loans for immigrants or we got loans. You understand where I'm coming from for this particular group or that particular group? Why is it that no one is in the community educating black people on how to have that same type of access? Well, and then there are some of us that know how to get it. Remember Charlemagne said something. I give him credit. He at least said... No, she's right that there are a lot of uh, like grants and loans. And she, he said 60% of the people, and you said it too, 60% of the people didn't even apply for it. Mm -hmm. So does that have something to do but with why? who we are as far as but we're just why? waiting to be given something due to the democratic policies? Remember, you said until you got to the point where they no longer gave you something is when you realize what it was that you had inside of you. Are we so caught on the, on the government's teeth that we don't even want, like my cat's outside right now. Your girl was asking, can I let them in? I said, no, they won't go anywhere because I'm so used to, they're so used to feeding me. They will stay out there and starve. Right. I think that um, personally, um, in all honesty, I think that people just don't know how. Because I think that even many of us starting our businesses, right? A lot of our business owners 
um, don't even really know much about running a business, right? They just said, hey, I got this money. Let me start something. Beauty salons, barber shops, you understand? Tattoo shops. You know, majority of these people aren't people that's gone to school for business management or marketing or anything like that. So I just don't think that many of them are educated on how to do it or maybe not in a position to be able to pay someone to apply for that paperwork for them. So I think what we have to do as a community, those of us that do have access to the information is make sure that we make it available to those that do not mm -hmm. take the time to empower each one teach one if you get on and you know that you got access to a loan and there are more funds and your friend got a business call them and tell them about it let's have a meet and greet call up sign up to have people come out 30 40 of them show them the way through the paperwork we we're at a point right now where we got to put each other on i like that that idea of you saying like if we know how to have house parties for a lot of stuff why not have a house party where we're trying to show people how to sign up for these loans right Right. Or how to build up their credit. Everybody want to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. They clean up your credit, but you got to pay them. Right. And I ain't knocking your hustle. Right. But when is it going to come a point where we just want to see our people do better and it ain't all about money? Because we expect other people to do it. We expect other people to do it for free. We expect other people to come into the hood and help the kids out for free, feed the kids. Why is it that some of us don't do the same thing? Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Stanton King, make sure that you guys go out and support her throw the website at him stanton king for congress.com stanton king for congress.com if you guys are in the atlanta area make sure that you sign up go on and click the link for volunteer send over your information we'll have a volunteer coordinator reach out to you i would love for you guys to come down sit down talk to me come to my office tell me what it is share your ideas let me know what you think we can do collectively together as a community to better our communities. I also want to go door to door. I need you guys out here. We need to do grassroots. Walk with me. Let's go introduce ourselves to the people. This campaign is not going to be about me. This campaign is going to be about us. It's time for us to work together. Stanton King for Congress.com. And I want you guys to go there. You can uh, donate directly to her too if you go there. And remember, she gave somebody like me the chance to come here and interview. And a lot of people have. I remember when TD Jakes came and did, he, his people told him, I only have 15 minutes to talk to you. He ended up talking to me for three hours. See? <laughs> Did you give him some of this Jesus juice? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I thought, you are getting this. He didn't get any of it. He okay. just found himself like he was engrossed in the idea of I was saying things that he had never heard someone say. And even though I was cussing and shit that and fuck this, he was like, what you're saying is real. But the climate change. Right. See, in 2012, 2013, you still could say those gays or those trannies can do whatever they want to, but I also can say, I don't want my son or daughter to be that. It was acceptable. Right. The world changed to now that you cannot have an opposing opinion. And I said to a young man last night, the, the pyramid has been turned on, on, on its top. The point used to be here, now the pyramid's like this. And what'll happen if you fit in, in physics, if that pyramid was standing on the ground with the top down like this, what would actually happen? It's gonna fall over. The weight of the people, which is us, 99%. You represent the 99% of people. You did, did, did jail time. You were a single mom. You represent the people. Why is it that the people don't like people in Congress, in, in, in the mayoral offices, who represent them? I think that the people do want somebody that represents them, but I think that we just got so much media bias. They're not able to see who those people are. Well, because there's and no I way think uh, that Biden should be even in the running. He, he really should not. <laughs> and I think that um, the media is not being fair. They're lying to us. And there's a such thing as a confirmation bias. And what confirmation bias is, is that you only have to see something, right? Three, four, five times and believe that it's actually true. So if I'm watching TV and it flashes across my screen, Trump is a racist, Trump is a racist, Trump is a racist, confirmation bias sets in. It's kind of almost like if we see a case come on the TV and they say, oh, this man has been arrested for raping this woman, 
we automatically accuse that man of being a rapist. Yes. Just because the news says he was arrested for raping a woman. There has not been a conviction. There hasn't been a court case. Nobody knows what happened. We don't have the details, but because that headline says such and such was arrested for rape, we have now labeled that person as a rapist. And so I think that it's important for us as people, we have to do our due diligence. We can no longer just accept what everything, everything that everybody is telling us for face value, because what has happened is we have trusted people that have put us on a path to destruction and care only about themselves and look where we are right now. And it's plain as day. I've been looking at reports. I saw where Jimmy Kennel, they said his show has been canceled. I saw another report come out saying that Oprah has canceled all the rest of her events for the rest of 2020. I also saw something about Ellen DeGeneres, some of her events being canceled for like, why hasn't Ellen gone back to her show? What's going on? If they're telling people to go they to saying, George. They're saying there's some stuff going on behind the scenes. I don't know. They say Hillary Clinton's supposed to be in court in September. I don't know what's going on, but I think it's all coming to light. And if you pay attention to this, particular circle of people right it's always the same group of people mm -hmm. you understand where i'm coming from and they are all pushing the same exact agendas so we have to wake up and we have to understand that what we're dealing with right now is not parties but good and evil before we get to the phone calls rapid fire i believe in financial abortion if women are going to have the ability to be able to abort a kid because they want to, because they don't even, a woman can go and say, I just don't feel like it's going to, I don't want stretch marks. No matter what reason she wants, she can have an abortion, but they will not allow a man to have a financial abortion, which is saying, okay, it's your body. It's your right. You can do whatever you want to with your body, mm -hmm. but I should have the right to say, I am not ready to be a parent either. I think as long as women are allowed, to kill their children and get away with it, that it should be very fair for the men to be able to abandon the children and get away with it. Now, I hate to say that. Yes, it's a horrible solution, but I, it's a I've fair. I've raised children on my own and I know the importance of having a father and it really hurts me to say that. But if we are talking about fairness, it, the man creates the life. How is it fair for the man to say, Hey, I don't want a baby, but if she has the baby anyway, then they get to go to the courts and tie him up for the next 18, 18 years plus, plus right? Because she can also use the child as a pawn. You understand? And completely try to destroy this man's life. So the government forces the man to be a father, but they don't force the mother to be a mother. Ooh. If, Let's just say I was pregnant right now with your child and something was to happen. Let's this, just say we got into what, what, some this type might, of this might happen after the show, ladies Let, and gentlemen. No, no. <laughs> this could. Let's happen. just say. <laughs> let's just say that something was to happen, and and let's just say that we were playing around and I tripped and fell and lost the baby. Do you know that they could lock you up and charge you with fetus side, right? Yep. Killing a fetus, but a woman can go into an abortion clinic and kill a fetus and she gets to do so in the name of choice mother why do you want a choice to kill your child because if you wouldn't kill your baby outside the womb why would you kill your baby inside the womb it's the same baby the same person the same child we gotta wake up the, the funniest thing i don't know if you caught it angela you was very specific in saying it's not a baby it's a fetus it's not a baby, it's a fetus. But she wouldn't be as specific when it came to, that's not a female, that's a male. Mm -hmm. Why is it she wanted to use science when it came to killing a baby, but why? wouldn't use science you when it came to acknowledging? You won't stop asking me about why they're doing what they're doing. <laughs> I don't, know why they doing, I don't know why they doing what they doing. I don't know. I don't know why the people with the biggest platforms are allowed to mislead the people 
that's very very disturbing to me yeah. and not to have a, a a voice of balance right so how is it that every host on the show is aligned with the same things that destroys oh, us okay. from the inside out why do we promote the things that destroy us and hate the things that heal us mm. all three were against common sense logic and truth i still can't understand how she didn't see that it was weird that she used a scientific definition of what it uh, the, the 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 embryo was but would not use the scientific definition of what a man or a male is mm -hmm. these are strange and we have to deal with that and i want you guys to understand when you were watching that interview that's what you were watching you were watching three people try to force they tried to make her look bad when they kept saying, so you're against lgbt how did it make you feel to realize well one of the greatest things and that's one of the reasons why i took psychology is what you did you didn't act out you didn't because they kept trying to i don't know if you know it mm -hmm. but they were trying to push you right to act a fool so they could say look right and you never did it were you conscious or aware of what was happening when you were answering or is it just who you are as far as to, to just deal direct with people? Um, I, I want to say because I, I can understand the mind a little bit better now because of my studies that I, I knew which direction they were trying to go in and I knew how to make sure that I clarified exactly what it was that I was saying because had I not clarified what I was saying we would probably see articles popped up all around Angela Stanton is a homophobe <laughs> Angela Stanton is a transphobic don't vote for her Ooh, but again it's the enemy he's going to tell you not to vote for me so they can have their way with our children but the devil is a lie say it baby hey have we lost our way? Yes. And then I'm going to answer the um, I'm going to answer the phone I'm yes. for this. What I mean by this? Yes. You have black folks more dedicated to the party of the Democrat than they were to that same melody. Did y'all know? They were. Did y'all know that all of that money, the majority of that money that was raised from Black Lives Matter, if you go on their website right now and you see what it is that they're pushing, I don't know how many of you guys have been to that website, but it's all about pushing transgenderism and abortion, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you guys know that the majority of that money that was raised off of our plight, off of our pain and suffering again through George Floyd was donated to the DNC? Really? Oh, you didn't know that? No, ma'am. You need to do your research on that. Y'all didn't know that that money was going to the Democratic National Convention. Where y'all at? How Joe Biden getting Get the money of, oh from George Floyd's death? Where y'all at with you that? You got people up there said they they are they are verifying what it is where that you are at? saying. So Joe Biden, is one of the most educated groups of people, in, over three hundred million. They said. Mass incarceration and population control. Listen, you know, when we talk about abortion and we talk about a woman has a choice, you do know that a woman has a choice to not get pregnant, right? Mm. So as long as we do not create the life, we don't have to worry about ending the life. So birth control, right, keeps the life from being created, right? Birth control prevents the pregnancy, population control kills the baby after it's already been created so abortion is not birth control abortion is population control i just want to make sure that they have a clear understanding of that there is a difference Jeez, ladies and gentlemen angela stanton king fifth district make sure you get yourself out and vote and we know we have a diverse crowd here in soto nation so it doesn't matter if you're black or white it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight as a matter of fact i had a young man would i put up I the video huh? i had to go at 10. okay <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is uh answer a couple of phone calls she's got to get out of here in a minute because i've kept her long enough but we're gonna ask a few people to come in and join just your girl what's up you're on the air what's up hi how are you doing it is a pleasure thank you so much Tommy, this platform. Please give me so much help. I'm doing well. How are you? It's just been, it's been tough. 
terrible to see my country going under because <laughs> they're doing what they're doing. And as a black citizen, I'm, I'm just, I, I can't believe it. But uh, I wanted to say a couple of things. One was, um, if you pay attention to Trump's words, he'll say, Sleepy Joe. But if you run it, it's actually Creepy Joe. But he can't say it, so it's kind of like you got to read in between that line of what he's saying. Uh, my next thing I wanted to say to you is um, social media is becoming a problem where they're showing that Joe Biden's numbers is better than Trump's numbers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're showing that, and they have been showing evidence that they're going to cheat for the election. Uh, is that a issue going on for you? Uh, even though we get out there and vote, they're going to change that using the plight that they have. Um, that's that's where I'm at at this point. Um, and you are so right. You're telling the truth. I mean, this is what they do. They lie and they try to mislead. Let's remember in 2016, all the polls were saying that Hillary Clinton went one and that she was leading. And then Trump came and, and tore up and then everybody was crying and screaming and stuff <laughs> like that. We know that the majority of black America is not supporting Joe Biden. We just have not forgotten. And then there is a video that people need to research of Joe Biden basically referring to black kids as roaches and talking about how he liked for them to rub the hair on his legs and he likes for them to jump up and down on his lap. He said he loves when they jump up and down on his lap. Listen, all I'm saying is this, why go backwards? You know, there's a verse in the Bible that say, you know, returning to old habits is like a dog returning to his vomit. Why are we going back to Joe Biden? Why are we not moving forward? We know that we got absolutely nothing out of Joe Biden since he has been in Congress other than mass incarceration mm. and LGBTQ rights. They have their rights, right? But what other rights do they need? Mm, mm, mm. We, got a, we got a young lady here is going to join the show. Uh, young lady, you're on the air. Nikki. Hi. Talk to us. What, what, what are your thoughts on what you're hearing? What would you, what would you like to say to Miss Stanton? Me. Thanks for having us on. Um, we are definitely, definitely in full support. Um, you have spoken nothing but the truth, and especially us millennials that are um, married and trying to, you know, go about the right path of whatever the right path is. It's actually very scary because the fact that it's a pendulum. What's up is down. What's right is not. What's not good is good. I don't know what to do. I'm actually afraid to have children. That is so sad. And, and and that's a genuine concern. And 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 I would be concerned. I think that if if my childbearing days were right now, I'd be afraid too to bring children into this world. But that's not an excuse to abort, right? We want to prevent the yeah. pregnancy. But um I would want to say that you have to make sure that you teach your children and don't allow society to teach their children. See, that's why things were designed for it to be a marriage and for it to be a man and a woman, because the man was supposed to go work and take care of the house while the woman stayed home and nurtured the children and tended to them and made sure that they had their morals and their values and everything that they needed. But now we see where things are so different you know where the mother yeah. is working and she's not in the household to raise her children and when we're not at home to raise our children and we're leaving them at the school for eight hours a day and then they're going to the daycare those people are raising their our children and they are giving them um they're they're giving them things that we would not necessarily teach them mm -hmm. so you know our our children they learn so much, right, when they're young and they're just like sponges and they soak up everything. So we need to be really, really mindful of who's educating our children, what they're teaching our children, and making sure that we are doing our jobs as parents. So when you and your husband do decide to have children, know that it's going to be a huge responsibility. And to you, mom, it's very important that you protect the minds of your children. Mm -hmm. protect their minds don't allow them to be exposed to everything do not allow anyone to open pandora's box until it's time because when that box is open it will not be closed mm -hmm. yeah. 
Thank well, you. thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Megan. I know that young woman. Um, she's I, I've known her uh, for a long time. This young woman, her, her 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 now husband, they did it the right way. And I wish we had more people who we could say did it the right way. Let me bring in uh, young fella Spoon. What's going on, Spoon? You're unmuted. You have to unmute yourself. There we go. <clears throat> First of all, uh, I really like what the young lady has to say. A lot of good ideas and. Didn't say anything that I actually particularly disagree with. But the one thing I will say to her is when she asks, why do the things that destroy you get empowered and the things that build you get no traction, the state will lose power. That's it. If you have a bunch of people in power and they rely on you being attached to them to get votes, if you grow yourself away from their power, they lose power. They want to have you hook and chain and just keep you there for as long as they get Money, essentially. And um, Act Blue is the organization that the DNC gets slushed from through. You better from tell it. Like Act Blue, <laughs> did y'all hear us for? I was on it, I knew. Act Blue, cause I was giving y'all the tea, but he came through with it. Act Blue, remember that. Act Blue, That's you can one. go to the Black Lives Matter website. When you go to Black Lives Matter, you'll see the Act Blue That's link on there. And through. the Act Blue sends those funds to the DOC. Thank you, Spoon. <laughs> Spoon always come through with the good stuff. And the women like him when he starts talking. I don't yeah, know what he, he, he does. <laughs> He sounded like Billy, okay. sound like Billy D. Williams a little bit. Right. Hey, this is Spoon. You know the name of the place is called I the told, DNC. I, I told Spoon we can't. I didn't, I didn't hear her say anything that I disagreed with. <laughs> but, um, but I got some cold 45. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you, Spoon, for coming on. You always kick the real. Talk about that, that a little bit more if you can, before, please. I want to say this before you bring on the next guest. One of the things that we see um, with the Democrat Party, and this is the perfect anal analogy that I can give you all, what they want to do is give us a fish, right, to feed us every day. Mm -hmm. So they want every day, they want us to stand in line and get a fish for they can feed us. But what I would like to do is teach you how to fish so you can feed yourself, right? So if you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day, but if you teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So what I recognize in the Democratic Party was kind of like this boyfriend that I had, right? Me and this guy dated for about 15 years, mm -hmm. right? Um, and he was someone that always made sure I had what I needed, right? So when rent was due, my rent was paid. If I had a bill that was due, he made sure that that bill was paid. But if I wanted to open a business or if I ever needed uh -oh. anything more, that you That would understand stop you I'm from having to depend on him. I couldn't get it. And he had money, okay? He could have been put me on. He could have been helped me start a business or none of that. But he wouldn't because he was afraid that if I ever took off on my own or ever got in a position where I did not need him, that I would not come back. Mm. So he always gave me exactly what I needed and never a dime more because he knew that I would have to turn around and come back. The Democrat Party is the same way. They'll give you welfare, but will you ever give us something to get ahead? All these years the Democrats be giving us welfare, they ain't gave us reparations. We ain't got not one just big lump sum check to go start a business or to come together and start businesses or to go purchase a home. You mean to tell me you're going to give me money every month, but it's just enough to buy food for that month? Think about it. And then when that food is gone at the end of the month, I got to come back right around to you and wait to the 16th. For you to give me uh, some more money for the food that's only going to last a month. Come on, y'all. It's time to wake up. Think about it. They've encouraged us to, to tear shit down. Mm -hmm. But they even encur have they encouraged us to build shit up? Nope. Not one time. Nope. Man, let's see what we can bring in. Let's see. June of Wrath. What's going on? Uh, I'm going to make this real quick quick as I possibly can, but going back to what she was saying about fetuses being killed and all that, I saw a video earlier, like, right before you went live. It was, uh, matter of fact, I got it right here. Um, so, uh, these people, medical people, they stand in front of a clinic talk, holding these signs talking about Black Lives Matter and stuff, so he recording them. 
Matter of fact, let me just show it to you. Go ahead. I can put it on there. All right, here we go. It's very low. I don't know bro. if you can see it or hear it, but no, nah, we just see your face, and it was very low. But but just, just give us the gist of it. Yes, sir. Could you hear it? Yes, sir. Yeah, and it goes back to what you were saying. They just they just doing it for attention, you know, like like what you said with a hashtag now, we're handicap basis. Mm hmm. Yo, that, that's crazy. Hey, young man, thank you uh, for bringing that up. You you brought that up. This idea that they're not talking about the millions of lives we lose in something as simple as abortion well, that is think, encouraged. Well, they say everything else matters, but I think it starts with the unborn because if you can't die unless you live and you can't live unless you're born. So all of these other things that we want to fight for when we're talking about, you know, black men getting shot and killed on the street and if we're talking about gang violence and all of these other things that we're talking about, none of us can live unless we're born. We have to first be born. You understand where I'm coming from? One thing about Jesus, he was able to save the world because he was born. Hello. <laughs> Can you imagine if Jesus was aborted or Martin Luther King Jr. was aborted or Malcolm X was aborted? I think that it's time for us to stop playing Russian roulette with our children. Mm -hmm. Right? Talk. How do we know? which child is going to be the child to grow up and change the dynamics of our whole family situation? How do we know, you know, which child is going to be the blessing? And there's a lot of trauma that comes years after having an abortion when women slow down, right? Because, you know, we move real fast when we're young mm -hmm. and a lot of things don't stick on our brain the way that they do when once we, we older. grow older and we begin to, um, not only mature, but begin to see things in a different light. And we look at our other children and they're grown. And when we sit down at that dinner table and we realize one or two missing. Just like Amazing Desmond and Lactatia. While you have them doing that at 10, what do you think those boys are going to think when they're 40? When their videos are still floating around of them dancing around in dresses when they were 10? 10 years old. Smutting them out. Mm hmm. Oh man, that's old school. Yeah, let's go to uh, let's go to uh, my man. I, I love to hear from uh, my man Osa. Osa, what's up? What's up, yeah, man? Yeah. And what's how up, you doing, Miss Angela? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, what is your stance on two way? Oh, I'm fully. I'm I totally 100 percent support the Second Amendment right. As soon as I got par and I went and bought me a big old four five to represent my president. I think that what we have to understand and realize is that, you know, we when we were slaves, we were slaves for so long because we didn't have guns to Amen. protect ourselves. So yeah. that's another thing when these Democrats are calling for the first that first they're calling for us to be disarmed. They want to pull our guns. Then they're calling for the police to be defunded. So who is gonna have Who's going to be in possession of Police the weapons? State. And so once we don't have weapons to defend ourselves, then it's easy to, you know, capture us, to hold us, you know, against our will or anything. So I think in what we're seeing right now 
with a lot of the police not even acting, right? Mm -hmm. So how many times have we called 911? How long does it take 911 to get there? You are your first line of defense. Mm -hmm. I'm a woman. We're seeing so many cases on the rise with human trafficking. Now we're starting to see videos of people just rolling up, trying to snatch people, kids out of the cars and stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Like, we talk about this transgender thing and men feeling like they women and women feeling like they men. I know that I'm a woman. I don't try to fight men. You understand? I stay in my place. I know that my body design is different. I need my gun. Because if a big old strong man run up on me trying to kidnap my baby or something like that, I need to be able to protect myself. One more and then we got to let you go. Go ahead, Mr. Carolina. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ms. King, I, I love you so very much. Oh, thank and, you. Um, I got two questions. Um, all right, one, because I speak on my channel, I say that if we were to teach our children that sex is marriage in the eyes of God, that it would eliminate children being born without fathers. How do you feel about that? Um, I agree with that. Um, I think that we'll always have an instance, though, of children growing up fatherless because mm -hmm. things happen along the way. You know, it's not guaranteed that you know, your father's going to live your whole life or it's Man. not guaranteed that your mother and father are going to stay in a relationship. But we definitely need to go back to pushing those traditional values. I think another thing that we need to think about is that spiritual transfer that happens when people have sex. We don't want to talk about that, right? So if a man and a woman can have sex and a man can ejaculate inside of a woman and create a whole new life, leave a piece of himself there and create a whole new life, women need to begin to understand that a man can actually place a piece of himself in you. And I've been in relationships before where like I, before I didn't eat onions and then I was in a relationship with the man that did eat onions and then all of a sudden I like onions or I began to take on his personality or began to take on certain of his traits just because we were sleeping together. So I think that it's important that we teach our women and our men now, because it's gotten so wild, about having multiple sex partners because what you begin to deal with is multiple personalities. So one minute you feel this way, the next minute you feel that way, the next minute you feel that way, you constantly being conflicted in your mind. Baby, you walking around with three or four different types of DNA inside of you. Mm. Yep. Let's teach our girls the yep. truth. And let's teach them how every time you lay down and have sex with a man, you lose another part of your soul. See, they want to push. Because, see, I, I. Let me not. That's let me, what feminism let me, is. Listen, it, it literally listen, is. Women should have be allowed to, tell, to be just like men. I have to tell the truth, right? If anybody's read my book, Life of a Real Housewife, you know, when I came home from prison and I was out here struggling before I opened my business or were able to get a job, I have been put in situations where. I had to do some things that I did not necessarily want to do for survival. Mm. Never would I encourage another woman to do that because I know what right. comes along with it. Right. So again, where are our voices of reason? Where are our people that's going to tell the truth? Instead of Amber Rose having slut walk, right? Where are we going to have the abstinence walk? Why are we not teaching our girls and giving them options? And that's what I want them to have. Right now, what we need is balance because it's too much, right? Going to the left. We need balance right now. Hey, Amen. Hey, brother, I'm sorry about okay. this. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to have to cut it short because we got to let it go. But I want to thank you for coming on the show. And I want to thank everyone for coming on to the show. I'm going to give you the last words of what people need to know about your campaign. Wow. What you're bringing to the table and how they can help. Wow, guys. So I guess this is the wrap up of our show. First of all, before I even get into all of that, I want to tell you guys how much it means to me that I'm getting so much support from my community. Um, I also appreciate all the support that I've been getting from other communities as well. If anybody's been following my page, you see that I've had a lot of white supporters. And one of the things that I appreciate about the Breakfast Club is that because it has a platform that reaches so many black people that you all were able to hear my voice and know that I'm fighting for you. Um, there were times that I was really discouraged because I'm like, you know, I'm sitting up here, I'm risking it all. I'm, I'm going into this White House. I'm taking myself into this atmosphere. I'm fighting for these people. Why can't they see it? 
Why don't they get that I'm for them? So I just want to tell you all how much it means to me that you guys have woke up. Every comment that I'm reading, everybody that's come and follow me, even the people that have apologized and said, you know, that they got me wrong. It just means a lot to me that we're waking up. Um, at the end of the day, Republican, whatever you want to call it, I ain't going to never forget that I'm black. I'm blackity black. You understand where I'm coming from and not going to apologize for it. But I know that our communities could be better. So one of the things that I'm fighting for for my campaign, of course, is criminal justice reform, um, which I have been heavily involved in. I think that we definitely need to reform our criminal justice system. There are too many men um, in prison, women as well that have been completely removed from their children's lives, which has had a domino effect. We've got so many of our youth in the street um, that haven't been guided properly. They're just out there lost. They're without their fathers. So I think that we need to rehabilitate our people and give them a second chance and help them re-enter society and make sure that we are reducing recidivism, right? We don't want them to go back. Well, the way that we reduce recidivism, which is the second part of my campaign, is job growth, job creation, and entrepreneurship. A lot of people um, push jobs, and jobs are good, but I like to push entrepreneurship. Because I feel as though we need to be in control of our own finances, right? I don't want anybody having control over how much money I can make. I want to make as much money as I want to make. I don't want it to be a limit on it. I want to make sure that I'm able to build a strong foundation for my children, right? Um, another thing is protecting religious freedom. I have the right to worship the way that I want to worship. I have the right to pray how I want to pray. I have the right to do what I need to do to give me my peace and to keep me being a peaceful person. Um, I think that religion should be respected, whether it's Christian, whether it's Muslim. Shayla, where you at? Shayla and I have been friends for 20 years. She is a Muslim. I am a Christian. We're not divided by our religion. She respects my religion and I respect hers. We can live in a world like that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that's um, um, at the top of my list is, of course, laws that protect the innocence of children. That's one of the first things that I'm going to tackle. Um, I would hate for anybody to think that I'm against them. If you feel like that, I have to apologize. That's not the case. But I also have to do what I need to do in order to make sure that we are allowing kids to be kids. You know, we've all been there before. I think a lot of us have grown up before it was our time. I know me, I was turned into a woman long before I ever even knew what it was to be a woman. And that was one of my biggest regrets, you know, losing my innocence. And for me, that's something that 10 toes down, I'm going to fight to protect our children. Um, another thing that we need to do that's an issue for me is the homelessness in Atlanta. Ooh. I've been in Atlanta um, mostly all of my life, back and forth when I lived in New York. My grandmother lived down here. I came down here every summer. And I've never seen the homelessness issue as bad as it is now. Never in my life have I ever seen it so bad where people have created their own communities up under our bridges. You, you can call it Tent City, where they've got all of these tents and they're just living. And I rolled through those communities and I realized that 99.9% .9 of the people that are out there homeless, sleeping on the streets, they're black. We have failed our people. Um, another thing for me is our veterans, those that have served our country, making sure that they have everything that they need. I think that I would kind of have, when, when I look at Donald Trump, I look at him as being the parent of America, right? And so us as parents, we have a responsibility. You're a parent and I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. As a parent, your responsibility is to make sure that you keep a roof over the, your children's head. You make sure that they are fed. You make sure that they are taken care of. Now, that does not mean you won't help the children across the street or you won't help the children around the corner. That just means as a parent, you have a responsibility to make sure that your children are being cared for and taken care of. 
Donald Trump has a responsibility to America and Americans. He has a responsibility to make sure that we are taken care of. So I am all about putting America and Americans first. Now that does not mean I do not have a heart, but there is no way that I can vote, right? to give tax dollars to people that are not citizens that have actually broken the law. You understand where I'm coming from to get into this country when I know that I got my own people from my own communities that have also broken the law trying to have a better life, mm. right? So I need those tax dollars to go to them. Now, once I get my people straight, then I can go back and get everybody else. But right now, there are 3.5 million black people living in poverty as American citizens. What about them? Why don't they refer to the brothers that's out here selling dope and the sisters that's out there stripping and, and selling themselves? Aren't they dreamers too? They are. They are. Mm. They on their own land. Aren't they dreamers too? On their own land. And let me tell you guys something about and then we're going to get ready to go. But let me talk about this illegal immigration, right? And people saying, oh, this land was stolen. Oh, you're mistreating them. Oh, they need to be able to come here. Let me tell you something about illegal immigration. So I'm a citizen, right? We're all citizens born on this land. None of us can walk around without having ID. Mm -hmm. Right. If I don't have ID and I'm outside, a police officer could pull me over right now, take me down to right street, run my fingerprints and not let me go until they figure out who I am. As a citizen, if I am pregnant and go to, to the hospital to have my baby right now, I cannot leave that hospital without filling out the proper work, paperwork for my baby to have a birth certificate or a social security number. This is me as an American citizen on my own land. Mm. It is insane for any of you to believe that we are supposed to open our borders and allow people to just flow into our country that have not been identified. Okay, mm. because let's just say if I was a killer or if I wanted to hire a hitman, I would definitely hire someone that was untraceable, someone mm. that could get in and out, someone that that's not marked, someone that does not have a name. So in this economy, remember, we're all taxed. Those of us that work now, those of us that hustle, you may not never get what I'm saying. But those of us that work and those of us that have businesses, we know that we are taxed and we have to pay into this system. So it is unfair for other people to be able to come here and to work and to make money. And this, not only that, let's not forget that when they come and they make money, I know me every Friday, I go to check cash place. They, they are in line sending that money back home. Right. Mm -hmm. Why are we not saving ourselves? If they're right? smart enough to save their own. Why are we not saving ourselves? Where are the organizations that they have for black people? We, we always want to take on somebody else's fight, right? Why are we not fighting for ourselves? Where are they, right, when it's time to fight for us? Where, where are the people marching with us saying free our brothers and sisters, reunite our families? How is it that all of us, black America, y'all fighting to reunite the families at the border, but mm -hmm. y'all don't forgot all about your brothers and sisters that's been separated from their family because i tell you something. It is American law. Anybody that's ever been arrested, you know that you've been separated from your family. Mm -hmm. Your kid does not go to jail with you. So this lie <coughs> that they have sold us that this president is separating families, that this president is putting kids in cages. Baby, I was separated from my family when I was chained to a bed in 2005, giving birth to my daughter with a sheriff watching for a non-violent child. You know what I had? Fraudulent paperwork. The same thing that's going on down there at the border. So if you mm. can fight for those families to be reunited, I need you fighting for all of our people that's been locked up from Joe Biden's 94 crime bill, three strikes you out. I need you fighting for them to be reunited with their families. Mm. I'm done. Stanton King for Congress. Let's be the change that we want to see, y'all. Get behind me. Let's make it happen. Someone asked about the book. 
Life of a Real Housewife is the book. If you purchase the book, make sure you get the one that has my picture on the cover. My publishing company is StantonPublishingHouse.com. If you go to StantonPublishingHouse.com, you'll be able to pull up every book that I've ever published. Listen, we have to win this war. Ain't no more sitting around waiting on the government. Ain't no more sitting around begging for reparations. Ain't no more sitting around waiting on the savior to drop out of the sky. We have to win this war. And if y'all ready, let's make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful, the beautiful, the intelligent, the next congresswoman in the fifth district, Angela Stanton King. I'm Tommy Sotomayor. Thank you guys so much. See you guys on the next. So you got to come back. I'll be back. Got to come back. I'll be back. I'll talk to you guys later. Y'all know I'll come back and talk to you guys. To all the people who have sent money, thank you guys so much. Thank I you. I love you guys. This has been an awesome night, and we're going to do it again, and we're going to make sure that this woman right here represents us in the 5th District. I'm Tommy Sotomayor.